As Russian troops poured across Ukraine's border, kicking off the Russian invasion in late February, something else was happening at the same time in New York. The stock prices of the biggest U.S. weapons manufacturers spiked, many eventually climbing to their highest point in years. War is good business for parts of the economy, uh, historically. It doesn't mean the defense contractors cynically want it. Uh, I know a lot of people in these companies, and they're as heartbroken by the war in Ukraine as the next person. But yes, war is good business for certain parts of the economy. The latest American weapons shipments to Ukraine include systems like scores of 155 millimeter howitzers that haven't been sent before, switchblade and ghost drones, hundreds of armored personnel carriers joining the now well-known and brutally effective javelins and stingers on Ukraine's battlefields. Sometimes you will speak softly and carry a large javelin because we're sending a lot of those in as well. Javelins are made in part by Raytheon, whose CEO said last month they do expect to benefit from the need to replenish U.S. stocks. We don't apologize for, um, for making these systems, making these, these weapons. The fact is they are incredibly effective in deterring and dealing with the threat that the Ukrainians are seeing today. Eventually, we'll have to replenish it, and we'll, we will see a, a benefit to the business over the next coming years. Raytheon, along with seven other weapons companies, including Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman, met earlier this month with top Pentagon brass in a classified meeting about not just supplying Ukraine, but replenishing U.S. and allied inventories. I'm not going to deny that these kinds of conflicts uh, can help certain companies. It's, it, it's the reality of the situation, but we should also be glad, uh, to the extent we want to help Ukraine, we should be glad we have this industrial base that's capable of producing this stuff on short notice with such high quality. The Biden administration alone has contributed almost $3.5 billion of military aid to Ukraine in the two months of Russia's war. Compared to the Pentagon's 2023 requested budget for weapons, that's just 1.2 percent. Critics say the Pentagon and contractors could use the Ukraine conflict to justify bigger budgets and more weapons sales. My concern is when those weapons are replenished, uh, will it be at a reasonable cost? Uh, will the contractors gouge the taxpayer? Uh, and also, will there be ancillary changes in our uh, military spending that don't really relate to Ukraine but are used because of the fear related to the Russian invasion uh, to spend on things that they really don't have to do with the defense of Europe. There are also concerns about where the billions of dollars of weapons are going. Once they cross the border into Ukraine, officials say the U.S. has no way to track the weapons, nor, of course, where they end up in the long run. Once it gets into Ukrainian hands, it's up to the Ukrainian armed forces to decide where it goes, what unit gets it, when, where it's stored, if it's stored at all temporarily. That is up to the Ukrainians to decide, not the United States. In the $33 billion of funding that President Joe Biden just requested today for Ukraine, over a third of it, $11.4 billion, was allocated to replenishing the U.S. weapons inventory and for Ukraine to buy more weapons. That's where this new business for these weapons companies will come from, Jake. And the concern now is whether these companies will take advantage of this crisis, of this moment, to raise their prices.